Hello Internet, uh, just doing a quick video on my file server that I built recently, oh, a couple months back actually. <clears throat> it's uh, running FreeNAS, uh, running a RAID Z1 um, on a 3 drive array, it's uh, three 2 terabyte drives. Um, looking at actually getting getting these pretty close to filled up, so I'm thinking about actually adding a second pool of drives and putting them together in a dual RAID Z1. Uh, probably here in about a month, maybe two months. Um, the motherboard for this rig is actually a super micro motherboard. It is the uh, X, uh, X10SLHF, I believe. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, it's a C226 chipset, dual gigabit, uh, nice little board. Uh, main reason I actually went with this one is to get these six, six gigabit per second ports. Uh, versus a like a 222 or a 224 chipset, which has only got a couple of six gigs, and then the rest are three gigabit ports. That's just for future thought. Um, rather have all the ports the same rather than a mix, mixed up mishmash. Uh, the uh, CPU in here is just a little bitty G3260 Pentium processor. It gets the job done job done just fine for 99% of what this machine does. The only time it ever really gets stressed hard is when it's running um, like multiple 1080p streams with Plex to devices uh, within the house and that doesn't happen all that often um, we've got a couple things planned for the future though so that processor might be coming out and getting replaced with uh, kind of a mid-tier E3 Xeon processor um, haven't quite decided yet but one nice thing is with that chip, if you're looking at building a, a system for yourself and trying to keep prices down a little bit, um, it's only a $50 chip, but it does support ECC memory, which if you're going to run FreeNAS and do a ZFS uh, file, uh, file system, you really, 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 really want ECC memory. Um, main reason for that is FreeNAS and ZFS in particular within FreeNAS or any you know, free BSD or any of those. Um, relies on your RAM and not the hard drives. So a traditional RAID controller kind of looks at the parities on drives and kind of looks at the two, but it doesn't really know which one's right, which one's wrong, if it does come up with a discrepancy. ZFS relies entirely on the memory. Uh, if you run just traditional RAM in there and for some reason a bit gets flipped within that because of its reliance on the memory, it will actually take that bad data and put it into your, into your drive array, which, uh, basically corrupts your data and you know makes whatever information on there is worthless or at least the data that gets corrupted becomes worthless um, so not a real not a not a real good thing obviously so you want to make sure you're running you know ECC memory um, don't run regular traditional memory you know just standard unbuffered non error correcting memory you don't don't want that but unbuffered ECC is fine um, if you got some old server hardware laying around, you got some buffered, uh, fully buffered or registered ECC, it'll, it'll work. Uh, it's, the guy's kind of on the overkill side though. Um, this particular machine's actually got 32 gigs of ECC memory in it. Um, after this thing's been running for about a day or so, it'll actually use up all of that with drive cache uh, from all the data coming and going from it. Uh, sometimes it only takes a few hours depending on what everybody in the house is doing. Uh, the uh, gigantic cooler on here is a bit of overkill and it wasn't what was originally put in here. Um, I had actually gone with the stock Intel cooler initially, but I uh, say so like so this machine's been around for about two months now and a few days ago that fan actually started making some terrible like squeaking and screeching noises and this thing stays pretty much silent. Um, my gaming machine actually makes more noise than this thing does. A little bit of fan hum, so any noise you hear is actually coming from that right now. Otherwise, this thing's pretty well silent unless I shut everything off and there's only thing in here is making noise is that. Oh, we got a garbage truck outside picking up. Um, but yeah, no, it's, uh, you know, it, it's overkill. Um, way, 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 way overkill. It actually does fit in the case, uh, but I have to take that fan off to do it. I mean, it just barely fits inside of there. I don't know how you can tell that or not, but you can't get the side panel on without the fan. So one of my uh, next few trips into Micro Center here in the not too distant future, I'll pick up a another NFF 12 and stick it on there so I actually have the clearance to actually put the side panel back on. It's been like this for the last couple days now, but yeah, it, it, it works for a temporary solution. Um, 
Around the back side here, the uh, nice thing is is a fully headless computer. Um, I've actually been using the IPMI functionality on the Super Micro motherboard so I can remote access and get into you know the underlying hardware, check uh, check uh, you know temperatures and things of that nature which aren't real easy to do through uh, through FreeNAS. I mean you can go in and do console commands to get to some of that stuff. But the nice thing is with this is I can just you know pull up a web page access it through that and boom there I know what temperatures the CPU and the RAM and that kind of stuff so that's the only thing I can't get to is drive temperatures that unfortunately you have to write your own scripts for put them in through shell and have it email them or just check them periodically yourself which is kind of a huge pain in the butt but that's the only option right now um, the other thing you'll notice is I do have both the gigabit ports hooked up um, and running up to my WRT 1900 AC. Uh, that is a V1 version. The only reason that I can actually get away with this is I'm running DDWRT and through a bunch of scouring online I actually was able to find uh, some excuse me uh, find some instructions on how to actually get the LACP to function through some custom commands to uh, basically gain that access into the hardware. The hardware can do it but without some a little bit of extra assistance it won't you know, just natively support it even with DDWRT installed. Now that it is and set up um, I can actually run uh, aggregate connection using the LACP pro protocols um, which is kind of nice because if I've got like my machine over here doing something and hitting it hard it'll use up a full gigabit and then the other line pretty much is feeding or receiving data from the rest of the house you know depending on what's kind of going on um, and it changes and moves that stuff all around on the fly it's actually it's a kind of cool um i mean i've sat downstairs on my laptop just looking at it seeing what it's doing and uh watching it bounce back and forth depending on what the load's going on sometimes maxing out both sides of it in a couple of instances mainly when other machines are doing backups at the same time so it kind of loads it all up it's uh yeah it's, it's pretty slick it works pretty good uh, i'm pretty happy with it um this configuration, like I said, it's not going to stay this way forever. Uh, I am looking at probably getting like some mid-tier E3s on in the not too distant future, just because of some things I've got planned as far as future plugins for FreeNAS and a few other things going on. Um, I'm going to probably need that little extra bit of horsepower, so we'll give that a shot. See, uh, see how that helps. Um, do plan on putting another another pool of drives in here and put them together with the existing pool um, with FreeNAS and ZFS you can't really like directly add it and have it work I guess is the best way to put it you actually have to run a separate pool of drives so it'll be a separate um, RAID Z1 another three drive array and then those two arrays get put together to make basically like one kind of big cool one data set uh, which is it's kind of handy it's, it's it's a weird way of doing it um, you can't just like plug the drives in until it's a rebuild itself it doesn't really work that way so we'll give that a shot see how that works um, so I'm just getting close to running out of storage I've got piles and piles of DVDs still to put on here yet I got that's one of the piles I've gone through so far plus I've got another box here full and I've got more scattered around that still need to go on here yet plus just all my other normal day-to-day -day stuff um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So, um, I can't really think of anything else. Uh, if I am forgetting something and somebody's got a question about, by all means, you know, leave a comment down below. I'll try to answer them as best as I can. And as I got some other projects going on, uh, probably going to be doing a PFSense router in the not too distant future, as well as I'm looking at picking up a used uh, Dell server for another project that I've got going on. It's an old Dell. Uh, 2900 that I found for really cheap if I can get get a deal worked up at least uh, it seems pretty cheap right now so if it looks good and runs good when I go check it out uh, we'll be adding a gigantic tower server in here as well uh, you know for giggles because we all like giggles um, yeah that's pretty much it uh, like I said leave a comment below um, questions whatever and uh, thanks a lot have a good one